In this tutorial, we show you how to create procedural colors on emitters and hair. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Adding a procedural color to your particle emitter is fairly easy. And it could also be done to any particle system, including hair. You can select your particle system, your, your, your default cube, and let's add a particle system for this example. And we're going to add a particle system, and we can do it with the emitter or hair. We're going to use emission in this, in this example. We're going to make the lifetime of the emissions last as long as our particle system. If we press spacebar, we can see all the particles fall. And we probably want this to end at 250 as well so that it just never stops. And all we need to do now is, one thing we could do is go to Render View, Shift A, Mesh, use a Icosphere GX, and you can use any mesh that you like. As the example, Shade Smooth, and choose your emission. In the render, change from Halo to, you can either put it in a collection or choose an object. In this case, we're gonna use this object here. And we're going to just scale this to 0 0.2, but we're going to give it, give it a randomness of 1. So you get all sorts of crazy different sizes to make it quite interesting. And I'm going to press numpad 1 for front orthographic view, control shift numpad 0. I'm going to select the camera and just get the camera in the right position, which is somewhere here. And then I'm going to choose the world scene, choose render viewport so we can see how everything looks. And we're going to change the world scene to 100% white. And then we're going to select this icosphere. We're going to pull this up over here. Oh, come on. My mouse is acting up. There we go. And we're going to change to shader editor. Then we're going to click new. And obviously, if you mess with this color here, it's just one singular color, and that's not procedural color. So the way we add procedural color is if we press Shift A, search, and we type in color, and we select color ramp. We put the color ramp into the base color, and let's add a few more examples. Maybe we'll add another example. There we go, we've got five colors to choose from. And then we have to also add one more thing, Shift A, in the search type in object and type select object info and all you need to do is connect your random to the factor now before we do this let me just show you if your factor is zero it's black if it's one it's white because it's based on where these color marks are so if you connect random in it's going to be all over the place each time as you can see over here and we've pretty much added procedural color now all we have to do is select the colors it can choose from so we might say it can choose yellow, select the next color, let's make this nice and bright, orange, let's choose the next color, nice and bright, red, next color, once again, nice and bright, and uh, pinkish red, I guess, and then final color, Maybe make a yellowy green. Yeah, or we can just change it to, I don't know, blue. There we go. And uh, all we need to do now is render this out. If you change this back to our timeline, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And there we have our emissions, all random different colors. This is procedural coloring on your emission. By the way, you, we could select our box over here and we could go to our particle properties and if we change this to hair, it would still affect the object in terms of hair. Probably reduce the length here to 0 0.1 or let's try 1. And you'll still get the effect camera, G, but, but you get the idea. That's how you add procedural color to both your, let's select this, both your um, hair and your emitter. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.
one other cool effect you, you could do, uh, it's just something pretty obvious now that you know how to add procedural colors, to go to your shader, select your color, and remove your, uh, your principal BSDF, delete it, press Shift A, go to your shader options and choose emission and then connect your emission to color and emission to surface. We scroll out here, we press play. The only thing we want to do maybe is increase the strength to two and then go to our render settings and make ambient occlusion work and bloom. And screen space reflection, not that it will do much. The only other thing you could do here for a bit of a a pop would be to change the world color to black so you can really see this pop and if you really want to see this pop even more you might want to press shift a mesh plane s scale this plane out r x 90 g z numpad 3, G, Y, just bring it out over here, rotate slightly, numpad 1, then all we need to do with this background is select a material, and the quick material that I'll add here is glossy, 0 0.15, and then just adjust the light settings, change it to sun, one, try 10, and then just change the angle. Numpad one, I change the strength to, I guess, one. There we go. Control Alt Numpad Zero, and it happens to be a pretty good angle to demonstrate this. And that's it. We've just created a very interesting scene. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.